Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, last week I came out with my first YouTube video ever. I walked you guys through my journey from a baker to a software engineer at Microsoft within two years. If you haven't seen this video, I will go ahead and attach a link down below if you'd like to watch it. I received a lot of feedback for this video and a lot of it was very positive. People are very inspired and motivated to start learning to program and a lot of people had many questions about what language to learn, where to start, what resources to use. And so I wanted to take all those questions and compile them into a video. All of that inspiration is great, but now it's time for application, right? So today's video is going to be split into two separate sections. First, I want to talk to you guys about how to choose a programming language and how to choose what you want to learn. That's the first part of the video. The second part of the video will be about what resources are available out there for you. I try to choose resources that are either free or relatively cheap to use so that they would be available to the majority of people. And there's many resources out there, but I did choose some of my favorites and some that I have either used frequently in the past or still use a lot to this day. Part one. What programming language should you choose? So when you look at the tech industry as a whole, there's a variance of different IT professions out there. I was a web developer. Now officially my title is software engineer. Um, I do both front end and back end work, but that is only one facet of the IT industry. There's a lot of different other careers out there and the first step for you is to determine what career path do you want to pursue. Some examples. So there's artificial intelligence, machine learning, mobile app development, web design, web development, software engineering, cybersecurity. The list goes on. So what I'm asking you guys to do first is I want you to go to Google. I want you to research what options you have. Then we can start talking about what programming language is the most applicable to that, to that career. For example, if you want to become a web developer, most likely you'll want to start off with by learning JavaScript. Become a mobile iOS developer, your best bet is probably starting with a language like Swift. If you're interested in machine learning, you might want to choose Python. If you are interested in game development, then maybe you should learn C-sharp and then, so you get my point here. So I, myself, cannot decide for you what language to choose, but doing some research, finding out what you're interested in, that will help you decide where you want to go. And there's plenty of tech careers in each category and there's a plenty of opportunities. Um, now, one thing that I want to make sure to get across to you guys is you really want to concentrate on one language and one concept at a time. I would love to learn artificial intelligence concepts and machine learning and web development and four different languages at the same time. But if you try to do that, especially as a beginner, you're going to get lost and there's going to be a lot of confusion and you're not going to progress at the pace that you should be moving forward. So therefore, if you do your research and you cannot figure out what you want to do and you don't even know what programming language to start with, just pick one. That's okay. You don't need to know for sure and just start working on learning that language. Do not expand and try to learn multiple languages at the same time. Because once you've learned one language, adding a couple more is not going to be as challenging. Um, the basics are similar. There's some slight subtle differences between languages. Some are harder. Some require, you know, memory allocation. But overall, you are better off starting with concentrating on one thing at a time. Okay, 
So now, moving on to part two. Let's talk about the different resources that, as a beginner, you have available to you when you first start learning how to program. Okay, so the first resource that I suggest you guys take a look at is called freecodecamp.org. This is actually my favorite resource to suggest to beginners, um, specifically for people that are interested in web development and also machine learning, because there are certifications here that are available for both of those career paths. And the awesome thing about Free Code Camp is that it's completely free. And the Free Code Camp also has a huge community. So if you go to this forum here, you'll see that people are asking tons of questions. Uh, people are helping each other through projects. So not only do you have a lot of free curriculum and you can get certifications for free you also have many people who will do it with you and so just to show you the platform here um, you can choose a different certification that you want to pursue and then you can go through these lessons the lessons are really fun and gamified and as you can see here um, you read something and then you follow along and actually make some changes in the code and then you see the results here on the right so um, this makes it really hands-on and easy to progress forward and then one of my favorite things about free code camp is it gives you a lot of projects options to complete and projects are my favorite thing to suggest to beginners because beginners hate projects um, a lot of people think that they're not capable to start a project until they know and have everything memorized, but that's not how software engineering works. And learning through projects is one of the best ways to challenge yourself um, and get better. And a lot of these may require you to actually Google things and go out of your comfort zone or go to the forum and ask questions, but that's um, part of what we do as software engineers on a daily basis. So that's resource number one. All right, resource number two, Code Academy. Code Academy has been around for a long time. I remember I started using Code Academy four years ago um, when I first was interested in learning how to program. I like Code Academy because you can go on here and this can be your way of saying, oh, do I like programming? Um, and there's a lot of beginner and more intermediate courses that are available now through the platform. And so... If we go to the course catalog here, you'll see that there's more options in terms of languages than there are with Free Code Camp. So all these languages on the left here allow you to learn all of these. I know that some courses are completely free. Other courses you do have to pay for, and there's these pro paths that are actual career paths that um, get you to a certificate of completion and provide you as well with projects that you'll build. I think that personally, I still prefer Free Code Camp to Code Academy, since here you have to pay um, for essentially the same thing that you're getting here. But Code Academy has more variety, so I do like that a lot. Okay, so the next website that I want to have you guys take a look at is called Udemy. Udemy is very popular in terms of looking at video course content that is specific to the language or the category that you're interested in. So also Udemy is not only specific to IT and software, there's a lot of different categories here. Um, but what you do is you buy a specific course that's offered by the person who has created it and usually the ones at the top are the ones that are have the highest amount of ratings so those are the ones that I suggest you buy. Um, this price here is not accurate to most of the time. Udemy has sales probably about every week and so most of the time every single course on their site is between eight to twelve dollars um, and it's always discounted on sale especially the first time that you visit the site I'm pretty sure that they offer you a lot of incentives to buy courses so and if it is at this price then you know just wait a couple days and it'll go back to its sale price another site that you guys should take a look at is called Plural Site. 
Pluralsight.com. Pluralsight is another video-based content um, platform for a lot of different web development courses. So as you can see here, they're showing JavaScript and um, they have a lot of hours of content, of video content. One of my favorite things about Pluralsight is they separate their courses into beginner, intermediate, and advanced within a series. So here within JavaScript, they will separate these courses. And so as a advanced JavaScript developer, you don't have to sift through the elementary beginner videos to get to some of the more challenging content for those of you that are more advanced. And then another one of my favorite features about Pluralsight is they have this thing called the Skill IQ, which is where you take a test on a language or a skill set to determine how good and proficient you are within that. Uh, language and you'd be surprised you might think that you are an expert in something and it will put you at like a middle proficient and then it will offer you courses and videos that you can watch to kind of get past that to where you are an expert so I love that feature uh, I believe Pluralsight is about $30 a month um, and you can always try a free trial too to start off with. Uh, this is one of my favorite resources. I do use Pluralsight most of the time when I need to learn something new. And I don't watch all of the videos, but I sift through videos of a new language or a new concept and determine what's most important for me to learn. Mm -hmm.